Hello, my name is Jolt and I'm the host of this channel. I've decided to create this channel because few YouTubers are focused on quality cinema, art house cinema, most of them having a commercial public target with content related on what's new. I want to engage and guide my followers to quality movies from different genres, no matter how old they are or from what country. I will be helped by some friends with the same passion to create a lot of good and original content. As the title says, this list focuses on Japanese movie productions that I consider to be at least very good, and the smallest grade I'm about to start with is 8. This grade indicates that the movie is a very good one from my point of view. Let's start our top 10 with Survive Style 5 Plus. This production being directed by Gin Sekiguchi. It's a less known production that is based on 5 stories which, at the beginning, seem not to connect, being a strange, mysterious and comic movie at the same time. The first story is about a man killing his wife, then burying her in the woods and finding her alive when he gets home. The second story is about Yoko, a whooping director who creates commercials that are very strange, comical or humorous and vulgar, and they seem comic and successful every time and ideas come to her while discussing with different people. The third story shows Tatsuya Kobayashi, a laborer with family winning tickets to a sensational show, a show about hypnosis called Viva Friends. In the fourth story, three young burglars are shown and they get to feel for each other. The fifth story shows a paid killer who is accompanied by his translator and the two make the stories connect. The plus within the title is another short story about two girl school colleagues discussing at a coffee shop. Overall, I really liked Survive Style 5 Plus, a strange and comic production that made me feel good and if you want to see something original that comes out of the patterns of many productions, this is your movie, personal grade 8 out of 10. On the ninth place, Tokyo Godfathers, directed by Satoshi Kon and Shogo Kuruya. The film's action takes place on Christmas Eve and shows three homeless people, one being Jin, a middle-aged alcoholic, Hannah, a trans woman, and Miyuki, a young girl running from home. While looking through garbage, Miyuki finds a baby with a note addresses to the one who finds the baby, plus a clue to the parent's identity. It is a production that is worth seeing during the winter holidays, being a dramatic and adventure animation that is recommended for adults, especially couples, but also for younger people who can enjoy a high quality animation. I give it a solid 8 out of 10. On the 8th place. Tokyo Sonata, a film directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. This movie is about a middle class family living in Tokyo, and the head of the family named Ruhei Sasaki loses his job as a manager of a large sanitary product company because his boss has found out that Chinese workers are cheaper, so he can increase his company's profits. However, Sasaki doesn't tell the members of his family that he has been fired. Sasaki's wife is a housewife, and she greets every family member when they arrive home. The biggest son Takashi is a teenager who feels he wants to do something in life and finds out that the Japanese society offers nothing good. The younger son is Kenji, a high school student who gets to love the piano and insists on getting piano lessons paid by his parents, eventually getting what he asked for. It is a slower production, but it succeeds in conveying some strong feelings faced by the characters and I can say that the actors performed very well. If you love Asian cinema or family dramas, then this movie is for you. This production gets an 8 out of 10. On the 7th place, Paprika, another film directed by Satoshi Kon. It's a psychological sci-fi thriller, its action occurs in the near future where a new psychotherapeutic treatment called Dream Therapy is invented, allowing you to see people's dreams and record them. Dr. Atsubo Chiba is one of the most important members working on this treatment. Illegally use the machine outside the research facility to treat patients. It's an animation that has an original idea inspiring Christopher Nolan to make Inception. I recommend Paprika to all who have not seen it, especially for fans of the sci-fi genre. This particular one gets an 8.5 from me. On the 6th place, 13 Assassins, a film directed by Takashi Miike, a director from which I will recommend other interesting productions in the future. The film's action takes place in 1844, during the Edo period when the Tokugawa shogunate is declining. Lord Matsudaira Naritsugu is a ruthless person and because of him, murder, rape and torture among the nobles and ordinary people is the order of the day. Naritsugu's actions are tolerated because he is the shogun's stepbrother. Doi Toshitsura is the minister of justice of the shogun 
Shogun. He realizes that in the case that Naritsugu gets to the Shogun Council, there will be a war between the Shogunate and those who have been offended by Naritsugu. I like this film very much. The style used to depict the fights was original. The costumes and the atmosphere were in place and I especially recommend it to those who love samurai movies. But it's worth a try for everyone. I give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. On the fifth place, Confessions, which is directed by Tetsuya Nakashima. Yuko Moriguchi, a junior high school teacher, while teaching a class, lets her students know about her plan to resign in a month. Also, Yuko begins telling her students that she loved a man who was HIV positive and had a daughter with him who died at age 13, being found dead in the pool. Moriguchi claims that two of her students are guilty for the death of her daughter, being convinced that it was not an accident, and from this moment the action of the film begins to intensify. It's a psychological thriller that I liked very much. If you like the thriller drama genres, you don't have to miss this Japanese film. Personal grade, 8.5 out of 10. On the fourth place, the Twilight Samurai, a less known production that is directed by Yoji Yamada. The film tells the story of Seibei Iguchi, a former samurai whose wife dies of tuberculosis and remains with his two daughters and his sick mother, circumstances that make his life very hard considering his very low income. Seibei is working on a grain store where he does inventory. His colleagues are calling him Tasogare, meaning Twilight. When it gets dark, he runs home to his sick mother who suffers from dementia and to his two daughters. Kayano and Itzo, instead of staying with his superiors for dinner and fun. It's a film that presents Seibei Iguchi's life, without many over-the-top fighting scenes, however, the ones that are added are authentic. The film has a romantic and historical vibe overall. This particular one gets a 9 out of 10. On the third place, Hall's Moving Castle, which is directed by Hayao Miyazaki being the best director when it comes to animations. The main character of this production is a young and beautiful girl named Sophie who works in her mother's hat workshop. The Witch of the Waste curses Sophie, transforming her into a 90-year-old woman. The film takes us on Sophie's journey to find Wizard Hall, the only person able to break the spell. I really enjoyed this fantastic animation, Miyazaki being very well known for his productions that introduce you to the fairy tale world, and his productions are addressed to both children and adults. This film gets a 9 out of 10 from me. On the second place, we have again an animation, which is Grave of the Fireflies, being directed by Isao Takahata, another great director when it comes to animations. The film's action takes place during the Second World War and tells the story of a teenager named Seita and his younger sister Setsuko, the two living in Kobe, which being bombed, the two lose their mother and need to deal with themselves to fight the hunger and the wickedness of the people around. I let you discover the whole story, being a movie I've seen a few years ago. This production is a tearjerker film. And and I can say that very few films have managed to have a strong impact on me. This is certainly one of those. If you decide to watch it, I urge you to buy napkins. I give it a solid 9.5 out of 10. We go to the first place, a production that I love very much. When it was recommended by members from my Facebook group, I did not think I would like it so much. It's called Harakiri, a Japanese classic. The director is Masaki Kobayashi, who has other highly praised works, especially the Human Condition trilogy, about which I've heard very good things and I hope I'll get to see it this year. The story takes off in Edo, Japan, in 1630, a peaceful period that caused the dismantling of the warring clans. The samurais end up jobless, reaching the poverty line becoming Ronins. The action is focused on the Ronin Tsugumo Hanshiro, a lordless samurai who arrives at the estate of the Lee clan with the request of them letting him commit harakiri on their ground. At the time it was common from Ronins to make such requests. The clans often gave them gold or a job, discouraging them from making harakiri. Senior counselor Saito Kageyu believes that the Ronin wants to take advantage of them and tells Tsugumo that another Ronin has visited their home and had the same requirement. But Tsugumo continues with his request, showing them that he is very determined to die. I liked absolutely everything about this movie, from actors to dialogue, the visual aspect, the building of tension, the fights, the soundtrack, being one of the best action dramas I've ever seen. This particular one gets a 10 out of 10. It's up there, one of the Japanese masterpieces. We have reached the end of this video. I hope you'll enjoy the films I've presented. If you liked this video, please subscribe, leave a like and if you want these type of movies to gain notoriety, you can also share it. See you next time.